There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. One and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Today a chat with a bloke who has some very beautiful gifts, James Toadros, and a furry friend who simply insisted on making an appearance. James, it's lovely to see you. Um, you're looking... Uh, so Wonderful for you to have me, Abuna. It's, uh, it's always good to see in the digital realm. <laughs> and uh, I see you haven't come alone. I noticed uh, there is a tale to be told next to you there. <laughs> uh, there's more than just a tale. So I've got little Nugget here, who's uh, uncomfortably uh, trying to become a star at the moment. Uh, <laughs> she's, been, she's been annoying me for the last couple of minutes. But... Uh, well, it's my, it's my turn to annoy you now. So <laughs> um, uh, I wanted to ask you first, James, about uh, music and art. They're two things that are maybe not often appreciated as much as they should be in the Coptic community. But I think there's a case to be made that they are actually a, a very spiritual medium that allows us to experience God in new and different ways. So I know that you're into both quite a lot. Um, first of all, what got you interested in those sorts of things? My brother, Joseph Tuadros of, you know, Wood fame um, is, uh, is quite a prominent and, and successful musician. Uh, we both attribute our um, uh, success in the musical field in growing up in a musical environment at home with mum and dad encouraging and playing a lot of music and also to the Coptic church, which has a very, very rich musical tradition. And I guess on top of all of that, also being in Australia, um, being exposed to such a multicultural society, you're exposed to a lot of different cultures, a lot of different musical styles, and they all influence, I guess, um, not just your style, but your interest in, in taking up um, things like this. Yeah, I, I was just thinking today that um, I can't think of a prayer that we pray in the Coptic Church that doesn't have a tune if you pray it properly. So that is very true, isn't it? <laughs> well, it depends on the deacon. Uh, I've got to say some of them are tone deaf. <laughs> just joking. But yeah, no, look, it's, it's very true. And um, I mean, not that I could ever come close to the uh, the wisdom of the church, but I think certainly the, the church in her wisdom realizes the importance of melody, of tunes in connecting our very physical, materialistic bodies to the spiritual. Um, so I, I think that it's certainly a very powerful device that um, not just the early church, but um, different religions in general have have noticed and realized and, and used as a tool to to connect them to a spiritual realm. The musical instrument I've, I've seen you and your brother play, the, the oud, uh, itself I think is a very spiritual instrument, isn't it? it? It reminds me of David's harp. It just produces a particularly haunting sort of sound. It, it's certainly quite a, uh, a mellow and I guess melancholic, sorrowful sound which uh, Coming out of Passion Week, you know, so it certainly fits that bill. Um, but uh, I think every instrument has a voice that touches a particular part of us. And um, I think the mix and, and, and variation of all of those things can really appeal to, to various people. And I think the power of music is in how it can unite so many different people in, in one type of way. St. Athanasius, actually, St. Athanasius um, actually speaks about this universal harmony of, um, of creation and, and relates it actually to music. Says just as, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here, <laughs> uh, 
um, but he says just like um, you know the strings of a of a harp resonate together the high and low um, you know to create one sound different elements creating one sound um, so does creation the different aspects of creation um, you know the air the earth all of these things unite to to glorify God I think it's such a beautiful analogy and I, also with Saint Athanasius he was actually quite the composer and uh, a lot of People know that. Well, uh, you, you mentioned earlier the like the physical part of the human being participating in that worship, and of course, I think the Orthodox Church tends to also be very visual as well. We have icons and incense and lots of things to look at. I think the great thing about um, different sorts of art is um, it's not something that you it's not a talent that you have to be born with. It's not something that um, you know only the elect possess. Uh, it, it is certainly something that can be learned at any age, young and young to old. So I, I highly encourage everyone to, you know, if, if they've got a passion or an interest in something to, to take that up and, and to certainly um, to pursue that. My um, you know, artistry, if you'll call it that, is just hours of um, trying new things and, and persisting at that to get the correct result. Same thing with music, same thing with different um, various arts. Well, I think this is certainly, you know, during the, these coronavirus days is probably a great chance for a lot of people to explore their more artistic or their more musical side. Uh, but of course, one other thing that you've also been working really hard at lately is a much more practical matter. Um, the pandemic has hit us and we found ourselves pretty much across the world somewhat underprepared in terms of equipment and necessary devices and things. And I, I believe you have a really fascinating and imaginative project going to try and help in that area. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Um, look, uh, I guess this project is, I guess, made up of many, many different projects. And the overall aim is really to try to fit the um, or try to fill in the gap of our dwindling and exhausting medical supplies. You know, we're, we're seeing our frontline workers um, completely without the proper PPE um, devices that save lives, both for the patients and for the healthcare workers. So my aim is really to try to gather as much knowledge as possible. I, I, my background is in biomedical engineering and I've just been trying to gather like-minded people with various skills to try to contribute to filling in that gap. Now, it's, it's quite a funny waters to navigate at the moment. Um, you know, we live in a highly regulated environment and, you know, everything needs to be tested. Everything needs to go through a certain process. But uh, once again, what we're finding overseas is that um, we're at a point of desperation. And so it's, it's just about trying to find a way to support our healthcare system in, in a way that um, can at least save a couple of lives. Um, you know, any one life that can be saved is worth all the effort in the world. So I'm, I'm quite honoured to be part of such a project and quite blessed to share knowledge with so many other um, like-minded individuals that have just a wonderfully unique um, skill set of their own. And out of all of this, um, it's, it's been quite beautiful to see how many people are interested in, in getting involved and how many people are interested in, in helping their, their fellow humans, you know, um, there are people that have put away the ideas of trying to make money out of something and, um, you know, trying to capitalise on something and just giving, you know, open source designs, just giving and, and making and, and contributing. And it's been quite, quite beautiful. I can really see the, the Christianity in everyone, Christian and non-Christian alike, which is, which is quite beautiful. So I've been... Um, quite transformed by this whole thing. This whole pandemic, as bad as it is, has really um, 
given me a new push towards trying to live out my Christianity as best as I can. Um, and, you know, nowhere near, um, you know, as good as I'd like to be, but it's still certainly pushing me in the right direction. And, and I think that uh, this has been quite a, a blessing that I've received in all of this. It has also been quite stressful, um, you know, missing out on that liturgical life and, you know, this change to our lifestyles, you know. So it's been quite challenging and quite rewarding at the same time. James, um, at the end of every one of these videos, I try and uh, introduce a little bit of humour. And most people don't seem to like my jokes. So when I, whenever I have a guest, I take the opportunity to relieve them of the pain. Do you have a nice joke for us? Uh, look, Abuna, I don't do jokes. I'm just, you know, the puns just roll off the tongue uh, as part of normal speech. But, you know, it's not up to you or me to be making jokes. I think it's really up to God to, uh, to channel that, um, that inspiration through us because he is the original pun Tokrator. Okay. I tried. I tried. <laughs> I love it, James. I love it. It's, it's very good. <laughs> Look, Abuna, I, I was actually quite surprised that you asked me to talk about music actually in this because I thought that you put the tone in Antonius. <laughs> uh, there's, there's no comeback. To that. Well done. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it deserves a comeback, Abuna. I think it probably deserves a, a different guest at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining me today, James. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, as always. And God bless you and all the, the, the beautiful and the very useful things that you're doing on, on both counts. Thank you so much for having me, Abuna, and uh, we certainly need your prayers. So. Is it possible that I finally found someone whose sense of humor is actually worse than my own? I hope you find some time during this lockdown to experience the love of God through the gifts he gives us to explore the beauty of his creation through things like music and art. I know our youth have been doing just that. Check out their videos on our parish YouTube channel. I'll leave you with some examples of their lockdown art just to inspire you. See you tomorrow. God bless. Your
establish for us your peace and forgive us our sins. Disperse the enemies of the church and fortify that the she may not be shaken forever. Emmanuel, our God, is now in our midst with the glory of his Father and the Holy Spirit. Worship you, our Christ.